Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to In the Studio, powered by 100TB. They are 100TB <laughs> providers of infrastructure, like dedicated servers, cloud hosting, and other content delivery services. Make sure you check them out at 100TB.com as they make this show possible. It's been a long time since we last chatted, and we're back. We've got a new face on the panel, though. We've got the Davids over on the left. Lysander, nice. welcome to In the Studio, man. It's great to be here, finally, uh, after being here for about a week or so. Uh, get to be on your prestigious show. Whoa. Episode 11. <laughs> prestigious. <laughs> That's what Double I'm talking ones. about, boys. <laughs> Double one. Oh, yes. So yeah. today we're talking pretty much all things TI. We're going to go over the format as it is. I don't know if complicated is the right word, but uh, there are a lot of stages. So we're going to break it down for you guys, make sure you understand what's going on, and uh, maybe get a little back and forth going on about areas that we like, areas that could possibly be improved upon. And uh, maybe we'll get into a little bit of power rankings as well. We're going to discuss uh, some of the casters and other talent that have been invited. Oh, boys, at a long list. And we're going to talk about the stretch goals. We're just about to break 10 million boys, $9.6 million current prize pool. I'm just, I'm like, what's the right word? I'm just desensitized to these. <laughs> it's like, oh, 10 million. Big numbers. 11 million. Yeah. 14 whatever. million. It's like, whatever. Yeah. The numbers have no meaning for me anymore. For the players, I'm sure they'll have meaning. Yeah. If they win. I feel like well, it's it total dope with, with my predictions. What, what did you guys say the price pool would get to when we were doing this during the TI qualifiers? I said 5 million, maybe. I, I think the people, the people heard Cinder and, oh, was it Cinder? I said, I said eight. Someone eight? said okay. 9 million, and everyone was saying that guy's an idiot and, idiot. like, ridiculous. <laughs> I'll eat a shoe. And, and to be whatnot. fair, I kind of was like, eh, I don't really know, guys. That sounds really yeah. high, but yeah, he, he was right. I think it was, it was, it was Sindarin, actually. Yeah. Was it the, the pre-TI4 qualifiers? I think it special. was Sindarin. I think it, it was Sindarin, so. Oh, okay. man. Shout out to Sindarin, then. If we're not giving the right person credit, someone will be If we were thinking us. ahead, we should have pulled out a highlight reel of all of our, our predictions so we could laugh at how, like, how confident we were, you know, but yeah. three or four weeks four ago. Four million, maybe, if we're lucky. Maybe. Like, yeah. you know, I don't want to get too crazy here, but um, it's insane. So now, given the current context, 9.6, I think breaking 10 million is very reasonable. How high do you guys think it's actually going to go? It is slowing down a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I guess a lot of it comes down to if they come up with really cool new stretch goals. When TI gets really close and the event starts, I mean, you look at the summit, we gained like a third of our prize pool, our crowdfunded prize pool during the event. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and this is TI. Obviously, there's a lot more hype surrounding it. There's mm -hmm. a lot more publicity. So I think it could grow maybe another 500,000 to a million during TI. I mean, I don't think it's going to add like another five. But yeah. I think the big key thing with where they got the big boost was that the Immortals. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. where the big extra huge surge in yeah. purchases came in when as soon as you started getting actual items. So I feel like if Valve had another stretch goal, which was item related, then you'd see another big boost. Because when you reach that, like let's say it was some item set or some new career, I don't know what it was, then you'd see another big boost. But they, the, the rest of the stretch goals don't really have that. So yeah, maybe, maybe we don't get it. I don't think there'll be another big surge, but I think we'll slowly crawl up to 10 million maybe get up near 11 to 12 million during the main event. But the thing is now Valve knows they, they've done a lot of good valuable market research from this project. They've seen mm. what people don't give a crap about and they've seen <laughs> what they love. And hats. what they love are hats. But only the good hats, the really elusive ones. Yeah, yeah. The immortal hats. Yes. The immortals that now pretty much everybody has. I see that Wind Ranger cloak pretty much every game I see a Wind Ranger. <laughs> but let's go ahead and talk about the stretch goals here. I think we can pull it up on uh, one of the monitors here in just a moment. Uh, the stretch goal that we just broke is the A to Z challenge, and old Lysander here actually making some headlines on the front page of Reddit. That was a pretty popular little thread. Well, Guys, now that it's in the game, can we please keep this out of my pub games? You're ruining my pub out experience. Out of ranked games. This, ranked from, games. this, this from the guy who insta picks like the broken hero of the month. <laughs> well, ranked games. <laughs> I think it's, deluxe. it is kind of a fair point, though. You Most people want to play ranked to have their best possible competition and improve. And Yeah. You know, if someone's doing their A to Z challenge, it's their first Meepo game. Give me a better no feet. <laughs> a better mid of feet. So, yes. I don't know. It'll yeah. be like that for a while. I mean, the Compendium Hero Challenge already caused a lot of trouble, I think. Yeah. Uh, that alone caused a lot of trouble. And now with the Daily Hero Challenge, you once in, every once in a while you, you see like, oh, Compendio, ja, 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 you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Ranked games are meant to be serious, I think. So More, more importantly, we have Darude at TI now. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, well, we were talking about this, I think, on one of the last episodes where that stretch goal seemed maybe misleading isn't the right word, but Darude was supposed to be there anyhow. And this is just yeah. that it's going to be live streamed, whereas before it wasn't. So this stretch goal didn't really add Darude. It just added a bunch of cameras, which I'm a little shaky this about, is what, to be honest. I, I think Valve are going to be like, it's just a certain area. Or isolated. Or, so there is maybe a, maybe a table. 
And this has they have people they drag in. Okay. Yeah, I imagine maybe it's like an actual like uh, yeah, like you say, a table or a desk where they grab people, come up, have fun, talk to your, some fans and viewers for a bit, and then go back yeah. to them. Most of the party is probably not going to be broadcast, is my guess, but who knows what Valve have planned? I know every player basically came out and said this sucks, so Valve are obviously going to see that and be like, okay, we've got to come up with a tasteful way of doing this that doesn't upset the player. It just seems like such a risky stretch goal. Like the the value added is just a little bit, yeah. and the risk of a disaster seems astronomical. Of you know people being overserved for perhaps doing shenanigans on camera. And it's it's very bizarre coming from Valve, because Valve is a company that's very careful about what image they present to the community, how much yes. they communicate and share with the community, and that applies to the players as well. They want to make these players stars. They want to make them you know, people that can be respected even more in the mainstream, and you open up this after party to everyone, yeah, it's going to go south. So I think, like yeah. David said, it'll just be a certain area. It will be very limited, but let's be honest, this was... It it was it was literally pandering to Twitch chat and Reddit. And yeah. I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe they didn't believe it would hit that mountain. Oh, I don't so. think many people bought a Compendia because of this one, or yeah. or upgraded theirs. It's more like, oh hey, cool, we hit it. You know, we I just... don't think many people are buying it for like A to Z challenge. New upgrade creeps is kind of cool. The immortals are definitely the main. Yeah, thing. victory prediction tour. I don't really care about. That's a ten million one, and I just don't really. Unlocks the ability about for it, you to perform a voice taunt with your hero in the early yeah. stages of the game, and it keeps track of how many successful it's... predictions you've made in a row. It's kind of cute, yeah. but it's like yeah. it's like a big eh from me. I'm not that excited about maybe, it. Maybe 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 unlocks in... techies. You know, you never know. That's the best techies. one in, for me. Is like they basically announced techies is well underway. Which yeah, yeah Matt's Matt's tweeted some. <laughs> what would you call it? Like work in progress teasers screenshots of the the ability icons, but yes. the ultimate yeah. tease. Yeah, now now we know techies is coming, and I guess it's Valve time. So I think it says sometime after the international, or uh. as soon as, as when Techies is ready, you get this cosmetic or something. But it's like at least they're wor they're admitting they're working on it publicly, which is it's better than they've done for Half Life Three, and they've had <laughs> how many years to announce Ouch. that? So they haven't started. Yes. So. Yeah. They, yeah. I, that, that's, that's what that's what that's what they say. Haven't started. So. <laughs> Now, I've forgotten. Are we techie fans here or are we techie no, haters? I'm oh, techie. Anti techies. Anti -techies, anti -techies. Pro techies. Gods. Pro oh. techies. I'm, I'm pro techies. So sorry, Lysander, but Guys. he's just worried about his MMR here. All the yeah, insta pick techies. Insta pick Maybe he'll look, be on the other team and look, he'll be. Look, garbage. Lysander, you, you're, not, you're not thinking about the statistics. If you're not a techies picker, there's nine players in the game. Four of them are on your team, five are on the other team. Chances are if there's a techies <laughs> in the game, it's on the other team. Statistically speaking, it's more likely the Techies is on the other team and you win the game. This is well, going to help you, Lysander. Well, <laughs> techies being added should help raise your MMR. So I don't want to hear any of this bitching like my MMR is going down, people doing A to Z challenge. As long as you're playing seriously, that's one player out of ten who's on your team playing seriously. So I mean, I let's be honest though, Techies has the pudge effect. It's the hero yeah. that if yeah. your teammate picks him, he's trash can garbage. Awful player. If enemy picks you him, say he's dead. It's the same so, for Invoker yeah, yeah. and Tinker as well. So, well, and even if the enemy picks him, he's still not fun to play against. You're just walking around, you randomly blow up here and yeah, there. Yeah, that's it's the not, not a, fun part. It's of not techies, a fun actually. hero to play against. Let's be I, I, I feel that Techies just ruins my games. You and you and right Phoenix start, before, before he got the, nerfed every game. Like that's not fun for your opponents either. Uh oh, I saw a Terrorblade player. No, I don't pick Terrorblade. No, you not anymore. Once he got nerfed, you have standards. No, I never pick Terrorblade. I play him post nerf. He's yeah. He's a nerf. God is the TB picker. I'm the Phoenix picker. He's been nerfed. I I yeah. can pick him, okay? Yeah. Parker told me the other day Phoenix that his, his current goal him. is to get <laughs> Terrorblade out of his top play heroes. Yeah. <laughs> That's just dirty, I, man. I picked him yesterday. That's yeah. disgusting. Oh, you are gross, right, let's, No, let's don't just, worry. It's, it's, he's almost out of it. <laughs> God. Oh, I'm boy. getting sick. Yeah. So, uh, who knows, though? Um, if we break this 10 this. million and we get that victory taunt, then there's going to be a, another round of stretch goals, maybe? Do you think Valve will do another set of stretch goals if we... I doubt threshold. it. I doubt it. I think so. Yeah. Is there they, still value? Maybe they may, they may space them differently. They may do goals that are easier Look, for them to implement, but they'll do like something. Like, they like, like every one of you watching this, this stream. Like, they like us. They like money. Yeah. Hmm? No problem. Everyone <laughs> likes money. Yeah. Yeah. Shows well, people, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or at least they don't dislike it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, no moving, qualms about money. moving forward here, we'll do the easy stuff first, and then we'll get into the format. Caster invites. Uh, it seems like pretty much every invite for talent has gone out. Uh, we've seen a couple stragglers. What is Hip was one of the more recent ones. I think yesterday he got invited, uh, and uh, we saw Base Kip. Ryu Borez was probably the most recent uh, as an, uh, an analyst. Wagamama uh, recently announced that he was invited as well. So pretty much all of the English-speaking talent you could ever want has been invited. And there's almost there's so many people that. I, what's Valve going to do with all of them? I it's mean, a big jump up from yeah. last year. Like, yeah. almost it's a lot. Doubled, tripled, I don't know. Like last year they had there. six all, They had six casters at the event. Yeah. yeah. Granted, yeah. they've changed how it's going to work. They already announced on their website that mm -hmm. everything gets broadcast. Beginning, even with the wildcard play-in matches, they said there will be on-site 
analytics and broadcast. So this is basically yeah. like the prelims, the every the wildcard match casters. So if you look at last year with the prelims and casters included, like yeah. you had more people involved with that. There uh, were four streams. Shiva was doing yeah. one. We were doing one. AC and Draskal were doing one, and uh, Toby. Toby. And when was we were doing, doing it, like well. we had Blitz and Purge involved. Um, we had Shiva doing her one with various co-casters as well. So it's, yeah, I guess the main difference is they're all going to Seattle, yes. and it's still a wider pool than even that what it's, it was last year. It's good because like not everyone's gonna be casting at Key Arena, so that means that these people can still get there and be enjoying the event. Thanks to. Thanks hey to man, free paid vacation to Seattle yeah. for TI. You're probably gonna be watching, if not going anyway. So yeah. I don't think many people are complaining. Yeah, that was yeah. one of my favorite parts last year. I mean, I got there late, so I didn't end up being on the analyst panel. But getting to watch the TI three grand finals from the stands was amazing. So yeah, yeah, it was it was electric for that that. Match. The atmosphere is going to be ten times better this year. Yeah, hmm. ten times bigger at least. Yeah, that's actually a, an interesting question. It'll be bigger. It'll the crowd will be louder. Is bigger better, LD? Well, huh. you know, we were talking about this, H and I, I am by no means an expert, but there's obviously some new challenges with Key Arena. You have mm -hmm. to look at the acoustics of the venue, yes. just the viewing experience. I mean, at Benaroya, like, the, the TI2 was actually, wasn't a bad viewing experience, but the screen was, a, I'd say, like, 40% smaller or so, something like that. Like, the screen they used for TI3 basically covered, like, the entire, from ceiling to floor of, in, like, behind the stage, where, mm -hmm. or I guess it was above the stage. Just enough room to walk under, basically. Whereas at TI2, it was like half. And so your viewing experience was a lot worse. But mm -hmm. even then, Benaroya was just... Valve's comfortable there. It's They've, so they... intimate and nice. I, I really like yeah. it, but it's a necessary upgrade. You can't sell enough venue. tickets. Oh, no, I definitely agree. I just I can foresee yeah. some challenges with this. And obviously, Absolutely. Valve are very smart. But you, TI2, they learned a lot. They did a much better job in TI3. Mm -hmm. I remember at TI2, my, the first game I was casting, Valve was like frantically like kicking me out of the way while I was sitting <laughs> on the stool because they had to fix Dota TV audio and they're like unplugging stuff, plug it back in, which, hey, everyone has Dota TV audio issues, ourselves included. Yes. But yeah. um, you move to a new venue, all sorts of technical issues will inevitably crop up. Even just sound canceling for the players. Uh, you can put them in a helicopter cockpit, soundproof booth, but <laughs> a lot of the booths are made out of that same material. Yeah, that but... many people, there's going to be vibration. Yeah, that's like people chanting, start cheering, shouting, stomping feet, clapping. Good luck sneaking a Roche. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so. you can kind of be quiet about it. Like, I imagine there'll be some crowd commotion, but you never know if that's just the crowd introducing a team or exactly. something like that. It's, so. it's not huge for I spoilers, mean, just say, but... Dendi's middle lane, everyone will just cheer, yeah. so yeah. I don't know. That's 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 a fair point. Yeah, I like but... the idea of that just the booth is like being suspended in like a just a, a huge water jet, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that'll work. It's, yeah. it's not attached to the ground, so the vibrations aren't as much of an issue. There you go. Into water. I mean, yeah, Valve works. have the technology, this guy, right? He's thinking. Like, they've and already made 3D stuff. I mean, they've already got water jets from Merlini's bathtub interviews at TI, so... That was actually one of the my favorite suggestions. Was someone Hidden stretch goal. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said, let's have the Merlini bathtub on, on wheels so we can just roll him out on stage <laughs> between games for interviews. Yeah, that would be I fun. thought that was a great idea. That, I, I'm, I'm so That'd pro hot tub on wheels. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. But, of course, the caster invites weren't without drama. I think the, the biggest storyline, perhaps, uh, Draskal. I would say our buddy, though I've never met him. Your buddy, Draskal. He was invited, and he actually turned down the invitation. I think first time in TI history that an uh, invited caster has respectfully declined. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the one other salty caster that comes to mind, um, not to say Draskal's salty, but a lot of people think he is, is 2009, um, who was not invited last year, I believe. And then when he accepted his invite, there was like, I saw a list of all the responses and you have like every single caster is like, it's such an honor to work at TI. You know, I'm rooting hard for China. I'll try to bring my passion for the Chinese Dota teams. And, you know, I'm so excited for this amazing event by Valve. And 2009 was like, well, I thought about retiring, but just because a bunch of people told me that I don't care about Dota, I'm not passionate, and they don't want me at TI, now I'm going to TI. So, <laughs> so that was the, I guess that was, he didn't actually reject his invite, but that was getting the other, like, it's close. Yeah, the other yeah. is very controversial invite. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty surprised at Draskal's decision, to be honest. I was I, shocked, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally speaking, I was just, I was sad because I was like, one of my, Favorite times last year at TI was just hanging out at a pool hall with Draskal, just yeah, we, shooting the shit, talking. After the event was beer. over, we went to yeah. a, a pool hall. We, we had a few yeah. beers with sure Winter here. and I'll, I'm sure he'll yourself, be there, few other right? people. Oh, is he not flying in at all? Is he I'm, still I going? I don't think it's confirmed, but I think he I might still be going. I haven't spoken to him personally. I mean, I can't imagine Hopefully you would want to stay home and yeah. stream. I can't imagine the viewership yeah. would be that great if you're competing yeah. with TI. So. Yeah. No, I, mean, I guess yeah. you could stream in the off hours. Yeah, I mean, you could still continue your personal stream. Some people don't care about TI. They want to watch. You know, true. pubs and yeah. fair enough. like you'll see even when a major tournament is going on personal streamers will be going from time to time but that's true not I every mean, viewer cares about let's be honest the guy's cast of the past two TIs I'm sure not going there he's you know part of him will be thinking about it and disappointed maybe he tries not to watch uh, 
Who knows? Maybe he's talking to Valve about a, a different opportunity for the event. But what he said was that he will not be casting at TI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had to decline the opportunity because it was not commensurate with what he's been offered in the past. So, I mean, from my perspective, I think it's the wrong approach. If you want to prove that Valve made a mistake, you go and you kick ass and you make them look like idiots for not having you at the main event. Like if it were me, obviously I'd be disappointed. I think anyone who has yeah. you know casted like what they consider the top level and then takes a step down, it sucks. But I mean, yeah. if, if Valve offered me only to cast games that weren't, you know, like the big games, I'd still go and cast them. At the end of the day, for me, it's it's a free trip to yeah, TI. I'm, I'm going to be going trip. anyway, so. Yeah. But you are casting the main event, so yeah. easy yeah. for you to say that. <laughs> no, I, 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 I mean, know. I stand by my I words, teasing, though. Yeah. I, yeah. I, would I agree. I, I know you, and I, I believe you yeah. when you say that. So. As one who hasn't been invited, I, it's mind-blowing that somebody would turn it down. The largest esports tournament in yeah. history, not just Dota, but, I mean, a yeah. just astronomical prize pool, I... I hope it works out for him. To me, it seems like uh, an iffy decision, but... I mean, I'm I will sure say, confident. personally, I feel he is deserving as an analyst. I, I think he's yeah. one of the best analytical casters out there. Obviously, a lot of people compare analytical casters to pro players, but pro players cannot cast the event. Their work, you can't assume they're going to get knocked out. You can't arrange the event. Yeah broadcast schedule around Rick them, it. so it's just an irrelevant comparison for the purposes of TI. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, one thing as well, I, I I think a lot of people are giving Dreskel a lot of hate for this, uh, well, not a lot, but half of it, they're not supporting him, they say hate and say, oh yeah, they rank him along the second tier casters, so I don't think people should do this, uh, it's kind of mean to say that just because he's not on the main, uh, main panel, he's a second tier caster, I'm sure there are too many people, you know, there are too many people yeah. uh, that fit that position for the main casting panel, so... Maybe Valve want to try something new. It doesn't mean anything that he didn't get it this year or anything. Maybe they're going for a different flavor. You never know. Yeah. yeah. So I, I wish people stop. Valve hitting, does a uh, Valve does a lot of stuff, stuff where yeah. where you're like, well, why are they doing this? Like, those, <laughs> but they they definitely have their own reasons. They're not a company that just carelessly Slums does around. stuff. Yeah. Not to say their reasons are the right reasons or well thought out ones in all cases, but I find the whole way the invites are done really weird because it, you look at most events, strange. it's the organizers who announce it and announce. Like you look at how ESL did their announcement. Makes sense. It's very clear of who's doing what. They announced the four commentators, which would be uh, Capitalist, Toby, Merlini, as well as Sindarin. And then they had Bruno as well as fucking Mad, who are going to be on the, some kind of panel, so stats thing. So very clearly detailed, no real loose ends. For this, it was each of the people who got invited gradually leaked. Next person said, oh, I'm invited too. Me too, me too. And yeah. then a few days later, a few more pop up. Um, there's obviously probably some more coming, like the big name, obviously, who hasn't no one's heard from is Lumi. And I mean, without a doubt, the guy's been invited. It maybe just hasn't accepted. Who knows what the situation, but... Obviously, Lumi's been invited. It's the yeah, way of the frog. I'm sure he it's has just, as well. It's yeah. the frog's the it's, way of the frog. It's Lumi. Like. <laughs> but, I mean, to go back to your main point, it it's, is very strange yeah. the way that they do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I feel like you look at any event, MLG was the same when they announced that, like, MLG Columbus. It was like, the BTS guys are going to be coming. We've got Gods, LD, and uh, Merlini going. And then a few months later, we there was room for Lumi to go as well. So, there's the four of us going. Um, it's just, it's something which I feel Valve don't really care too much about having like that big announcement which draws viewers to their site but it's not about that it's just about having a clear flow of information to the community rather than this constant drabble out which isn't coming from any official source i guess i mean yeah. the other thing is what if a bunch of talent just don't announce that they're going and yeah Troll you know everyone. it gets to like a, a few weeks before like a week before they leave for the event and people are going to be going crazy and then yeah. you got to imagine valve's like messaging them like hey are you going to announce your <laughs> invite at some point like if everyone didn't announce they're going or if only a few people did that would not work for valve they yeah. they just assume everyone will be so excited that it's like i'm yeah. going to ti guys and they'll just announce it on their own out of that enthusiasm but i mean like you said, I mean, I'm sure Lumi's I mean, been invited. He has yeah. announced himself going. Yeah. So it, it just feels. What fun. if more casters do that? Then it looks really bad for Valve. Yeah. It's it like, did they only choose? You know, did they only choose like Toby this year or Cinderin or yeah. you know, did, did they only choose James and not Bruno? Like, why is there actually James hasn't announced himself going technically? So. Well, he's yeah he he's on the he's on the on gamers list. Yeah, he's yeah. on the official. And Cyborg list, Matt so. has his. Guess it's looks. assumed. His spoiler, birds. spoiler alert! He might be on the analyst panel with myself, <laughs> Bruno, and Ben. Like. <laughs> Whoa, Maybe. Maybe. Getting edgy there. Big big spoilers there, guys. Yeah. It just feels unnecessarily sloppy with people slowly leaking out the information like you guys said. And I feel like it also just adds an unnecessary level of stress. To and drama. Like, yeah, stress and potential yeah. for oh, drama. Oh, who's not going this you know, year. But, I mean, yeah. I, I spoke with What Is Hip quite a bit, and he was just recently invited. And that window of time where everyone else was invited and he wasn't is just like, that's a stressful time. You're thinking, like, what did I do wrong? Was there something I messed up? Why wasn't I included? And that whole time, just unwarranted stress because he was... He was on the list, and for whatever reason, he was 
lower priority with the invites. I don't know how they decide who gets talked to first, but maybe different roles. Like they, yeah. the first people. Well, Brian was one of the first people. You, it seemed they like were inviting some of the, like the non main main stage event casters first. So I'm, I'm not yeah. sure how. They, maybe it was just by order of roles. Maybe I don't know. It's just oh, whoever he could grab. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, you there? I mean, <laughs> hey, what an invite? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, whoever's, whoever's awake at the at any given time. I mean, it makes sense they don't invite everyone at once. It's just weird that they let people start announcing one at a time. Obviously, yeah. like you'll have your preferences. You're gonna invite Draskal first, and if he declines you, then you go to another caster sure. to fill his shoes. But um, it's more just why are people allowed to announce it willy nilly one at a time? Yeah, but I completely agree. Volvo, please. Volvo, <laughs> please. Yes, indeed. So. Um, in terms of invites, not too much else stands out. Shane was invited. He's kind of new blood around the scene, so that's a little bit exciting. And Coddle Guy and Maud, those are the two kind of breakouts, if you will, that um, I didn't think they were obvious invites when, but before we knew how many people they were going to invite. And it's a big shot for the high ground guys. And we got to work with them and uh, qualifiers. It was a blast and glad to see them getting yeah. a shot I, at the I main, think, main I think stream. Valve uh, just wants to push forward this kind of initiatives. I mean, they took a lot out. Uh, they sacrificed a lot as well. Both of them have jobs, I think. Uh, day jobs and they yeah. started this high ground TV thing so I think Valve just wants to support this kind of movements give them both a shot and they're pretty good and they, they recognize that oh yeah and they're pretty good yeah <laughs> I like how that's <laughs> throwing that in there just like yeah and they're okay yeah, just Coddle so Guy's I amazing on camera Are you kidding me best Hank Hill imitation I've ever heard what god damn it Bobby <laughs> that didn't even do it justice but he dude that guy is I he's guess a, he actually he's has an actor. Yeah, he's he got has a lot of talent yeah, real acting actor. training but he's, he's amazing on camera yeah don't yeah. underestimate the Coddle guy okay I look forward to beating him so I mean, they're, they're very humble guy. guys. They were some of the most enthusiastic, positive people here at the NA Hub. Yeah. Some of some people, like <clears throat> Greg, were not so much. But <laughs> Mr. Negative. <laughs> what, what is hip is a, a wonderful guy and he'll work his ass off, but he's the most negative person I've, anyone's ever met. Yeah. He's always bitching. He's always swanning. Honestly. <laughs> but yeah, Ma and Cottle guy were just it? like, what can I do to help? Is there, like, I'll observe. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll make sure, I'll just watch the stream, make sure there's no technical issues. I'll cast the multiple tiebreakers when it's like 8 in the morning. Everyone else is just passed out on the lounge stream. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why we would turn it off some days is because it turned into a sleeping area. <laughs> yeah. Cottle Guy was one of the most eager to learn at the NA Hub because obviously they specialize in North American content. And mm -hmm. like for the SEA qualifiers, he was sitting down with Roland. He was sitting down just taking notes like, okay, how do you pronounce this player's name? What does this team like to do? And he yeah. was... So eager to absorb that information. We did the SEA, the, kind of the SEA qualifier pre-show before the entire qualifier. We introduced each team, and we need like well, one person to show, and someone's like, "Grab Koga, he has like all these notes on the team." I was like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" And I, he literally had a notebook full of notes, <laughs> yeah. like stats, everything about all these teams. I'm like, "Holy shit, you know more than ever on this panel." You talk. Yeah, <laughs> combine you, combine you it with it. Mott notes, and we have everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We have notes. real notes, and we have Mott notes. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> Perfect mixture. I actually saw that tweet the other day. The Mike is feeding, just like Jesus, Mott. Good. good. <laughs> the Ben tweet. Great See how Mott got through college with these breathtaking notes. <laughs> Damn. Short, uh, short and sweet. That's what that's what Mott's all about. Yeah, exactly right. So, all right, guys. I reckon it's time we take a quick break here, and we come back. We'll talk TI format and uh, break it down, and uh, maybe we'll get Winter on the horn to talk about uh, his angle on TI four. So we'll have a quick break here, guys, but don't go anywhere. In the studio, episode eleven resumes after this.